What's going on, everybody? Well, just in case you missed uh, last Wednesday or last Sunday night, if you're in middle school or high school, uh, we just wanted to keep recording our uh, lessons. That way you can stay in the loop uh, if you're not able to join us yet. So uh, we are back in our True Story series, and this is week two. Uh, so we are still talking about uh, our identity. Uh, and so who God is and who we are. So we're looking at true stories in scripture uh, and what they can teach us about who we are and who God is. Uh, and this week we're talking about uh, challenges in our lives. Um, and when we think about the challenges that we face, they could be small, uh, but they could be really big challenges too. Um, and you know, when we face challenges, it's not always easy to predict how we'll, we will react. Sometimes uh, we'll be excited by the challenge, but sometimes we'll be defeated by it. Um, and, you know, whenever we face a challenge, there are some truths about God that we can hold on to. Um, and so just like we did last week, we're going to jump into our Bible story uh, to figure out what those truths are. Uh, and so when we think about uh, movies, uh, we've talked a lot about superhero movies. Well, in the Bible, there may not be any actual superheroes, uh, but Scripture is filled with accounts of God showing up and saving the day in miraculous and powerful ways. Uh, and we're going to read about one of those stories uh, today. And our story is going to be found in 1 Kings. Um, it's in the Old Testament. And we're going to be talking about a man named Elijah. Uh, and now Elijah got to see a lot of God's miracles. And here's what you need to know about Elijah. Uh, Elijah lived in the 9th century BC. So that's a long time ago, uh, like 900 years before Jesus. Uh, and so you can read him uh, about Elijah in 1 Kings and 2 Kings. Uh, so two books of the Bible. And Elijah was a prophet. Uh, and you may or not may not have heard that word before, but a prophet uh, is just someone in the Old Testament who was sent by God to deliver messages to Israel, uh, who we've uh, mentioned before as God's chosen people. And so uh, at the time that Elijah was uh, being a prophet, uh, there was a, a man who was king of Israel, and his name was King Ahab. And he was not a great guy. Um, like a really bad guy. So he did some really uh, awful things. Uh, he actually had people killed. But one of the worst things that he did was that he led people away from God. Um, the people around that time would just kind of make things up uh, as gods. Um, and so that's what Ahab did. He took the nation of Israel, God's people, and led them away from God. And so God was kind of angry about this, obviously. So God sent Elijah to do something really difficult, to boldly stand up against the king. Uh, and so Elijah does that. Uh, Elijah confronts the king, and the king um, says, you know, well, I have all these false prophets uh, that can do the same things you can do, and so we're going to keep worshiping our false god. So Elijah challenges them uh, to this, this contest, and he says, I'm going to pray to God, and my God is going to call fire down from heaven. Uh, and you false prophets do the same thing. And so Elijah's kind of facing this challenge head on. Um, and what's amazing about the story is that God does it. As soon as Elijah prays, um, God answers the prayer, and a miracle happens. Uh, and so Elijah kind of defeats the false prophets or makes them look like fools, uh, makes the king look bad. And that part of the story is really amazing. And it reveals that God hears our prayers, that God can be trusted, and that God is powerful. And now that's pretty awesome that we can follow a God like that. And so, you know, Elijah knew who God was. And if you know that you serve a God just like that, that can be trusted and is powerful, it makes sense that you'd be willing to take on any challenge that God calls us to, right? And God called Elijah to do something difficult, and he did it at least at first. And so you might think after a miracle like that, Elijah would be filled with confidence and be ready to do whatever God asked him to do. But instead, Elijah was exhausted and afraid. Have you ever felt like that before? I know I have. Well, so back to the story, King Ahab's wife, her name was uh, Jezebel. And Jezebel was also not a good person. And she was so angry at what Elijah had just done and what, what God had helped Elijah do that she basically threatened Elijah's life. She said, I'm going to send a bunch of people to come and kill you. And Elijah was terrified. He apparently had just forgotten everything that God had just done. Uh, and Elijah ran. And now, you know, that sounds like me sometimes too, that I forget what God has done for me. And so Elijah runs and he runs, but God keeps protecting him. 
Uh, and God, you know, Elijah even asked to die. He was so afraid of what was going to happen instead of trusting God. But you know what? God actually shows up. And <clears throat> so Elijah's sitting there in a cave. And all of a sudden, this, this huge fire erupts outside. But the Bible says that God wasn't in the fire. But then there's this huge earthquake that happens. But the Bible says God wasn't in the earthquake. A few verses later, it says that God speaks to Elijah in a quiet, gentle whisper. And this story is completely different from the last one. It's the same person, but different reactions. But it's the same God. The same powerful, strong, miracle-working God that we just saw, well, now we see that he's gentle, that he's understanding, and that he's with us. The Bible never tells us that our lives will be easy, but it does tell us that God will always be with us. Whenever we're facing seemingly impossible tasks, just like Elijah, we'll never have to face them alone. When you face your next difficult moment, you might react like Elijah with boldness, but you also might react like Elijah and be terrified. Um, if you've ever backed away from a difficult challenge, that's okay. We can remember that because of who God is, we can do difficult things just like Elijah. And now maybe the challenge you have to face is disciplining yourself to spend more time with God. Maybe you have to make wise choices. Maybe the challenge is to love others or to do what's right. Or maybe it's uh, the, the challenge of deciding to follow Jesus for the first time or deciding to get baptized. But maybe there are other challenges like going to a new school or doing school differently or losing someone that you love or experiencing just any other big life change. But when you face difficult things, what you believe matters. Uh, you know, our minds have a big impact on our actions. And so what we believe makes a big difference on how we react. So it's important what we believe about God and what we believe about ourselves. We have to remember that we can do difficult things only because of who God is, our powerful but gentle God who cares for us and loves us. So this week, if you're facing a difficult challenge, I hope you remember that because of who God is, you can get through it only because you have this powerful, loving God who can be trusted, but also is gentle.